and speaking of the undermining of America, uh, it seems that that nobody can secure our our border, and we are just being overrun right now. We've got we're bursting at the seams with the illegals and and drugs and uh, it, terrorists apparently. So how if how do we get a handle on this? The president continues to blame. For instance, Republicans for stopping him from finally doing something at the border, which he apparently really wants to do, <laughs> despite all the evidence to the contrary. What can we do to uh, finally get this done once and for all? So, look, here's the thing. Um, it's going to take absolute unequivocal action by a president of the United States who wants to actually get after the border mm -hmm. that day. and it has to happen with borderline reckless abandon um and, and what i mean by that is is and, and let's just speak in very real terms this year right uh unless something really odd occurs right i mean you know it, 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 it's nick haley's not going to be our nominee uh she does not represent uh the republican party mm -hmm. uh, president trump is almost certainly going to be the nominee um, and so we're going to uh, come in and we've got to get President Trump elected. And on January 20th, there needs to be immediate action and immediate support from a Republican Congress without any equivocation. No, none of the conversations Republicans normally have with the Chamber of Commerce, and all these people about what they need. And by the way, we have set the stage as bad as this Republican Congress has been. We have set the stage by our work last year on getting H.R. 2 passed. For the first time ever, Republicans passed a security-only bill that was very good, that all of the people we trust, guys on the blaze like Daniel Horowitz, understands the issue, uh, people like me and others that know this issue backwards and forwards, Border Patrol people and others, the mm -hmm. bill would do the job. So we've got legislation now sitting on the table. So President Trump needs to come in this time without, you know, the sort of Paul Ryan uh, experience in 2018. <laughs> and say, this is what we're going to pass, right? Okay. And this is what I'm going to do as, the, as the executive action. This year, all we can do is, frankly, not make it any worse. Mm. And, and the Republicans in the Senate, what they're trying to do, frankly, is make it worse by basically establishing a new floor, not a ceiling, uh, and kind of cement into law this expectation that we're going to let 5,000 people a day come into our country. It's just asinine. So yeah. do no harm. Yeah. Elect a president that will change the laws. And, and be ready on day one uh, to, uh, to to give them better tools. Uh, the disturbing part to me, though, in all of that is, yeah, I, I agree with you that nothing's going to get done under this particular administration. But to to get uh, the executive office back, it, it, we need to at least get the message out there that it's not Republicans. He, uh, Biden is doing everything he can right now to blame the border on Republicans, whereas up until this point, up until recently, the border wasn't even a crisis. It wasn't a problem. Now, all of a sudden, it is. It's out of control, and it's because of the Republican Congress that won't let him do what he needs to do. How do how do uh, Republicans uh, combat that rhetoric so that they can get an ex you know a president elected? So, I think the best thing we should do is go on offense as Republicans in Washington to make clear that distinction. And what mm -hmm. I've been advocating for is, and, and look, this is important across the board, right? And you're like in the intro to the show, I hear Daniel Horowitz saying 80% of our debt has been passed by bipartisan legislation and 8% uh, has been passed by Republican-only legislation. Mm -hmm. Just think about that. Yeah. We have to stop doing that. Yeah. We have to say, so last night, right, I was on the floor of the House. I had to go down to the floor and claim opposition time against a uniparty tax bill that has provisions in it that I'm sure you support. I support like immediate expensing to help some corporate, you know, uh, growth and economic growth, but has in it very bad expansion of the welfare state in the form of child tax credits, including tax credits that can go to illegal alien parents, right? So... So we've got this kind of action by Republicans. We need to defund this stuff. Mm -hmm. We need to stop writing a check for administrations to use against us. And until Republicans do that, frankly, they're going to own part of the problem. 
and 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 it's going to be hard to say that they're not part of the problem. So I just think you got to draw a clear line of distinction. Yes, message it. We've been messaging all day on Biden's border crisis, Biden's border crisis, Biden's incompetent, impeach my orcas. I'm for all those things. Go on the media mm-hmm. and talk about it. Most people are blaming Biden right now if you go look at the polls. But if we don't take a bigger step and have a fight on the spending, like when, when we do our, our spending bills in a few weeks, right? Yeah. We're going to spend massively over the caps, unless I or Massey or Mike Lee, the ones you mentioned, others, uh, and the Freedom Caucus and others, don't find some way to derail it. I don't think we can, right? The unit party has the numbers. Mm-hmm. We're trying to find ways to put pressure. But either way, I'm just saying, that's an opportunity. So I go to the floor when we passed the continuing resolution two weeks ago. I opposed it. And I read off a list of all the things mm-hmm. we're funding. The United Nations, mm-hmm. un- money going to Hamas, the Palestinians. Money going to the World Health Organization, money going to DHS, money going to NGOs that are moving people through Mexico into our country, money going to not fund the border, money going to the FBI. That's right. Go down the list. You're funding that stuff. Yeah. Don't do that. Yeah. And I, I think that's that. <laughs> it seems like a no brainer, but apparently it isn't right. It stopped doing that stuff. It would be nice if uh, if we would stop doing that stuff. The other thing that might be nice on along this line of thinking is to maybe pass a budget for the first time since is it 2009 is that when the is that the last time we had a budget so last year when we went through all the stuff with the speaker we made some giant strides but we were so far behind we didn't get there on trying to establish regular order right the conservatives when when we took that over over a year ago yeah well we did in fact pass a budget but against our push and demand, we didn't get that done to almost September. We needed to pass that in March to set the terms of the spending levels. That was purposeful by the Uniparty. They, they dragged their feet on it. But at the end of the day, we did make progress last year. Now we need to turn it on its head this year. We need to pass a budget mm-hmm. uh, this year, this spring, that sets our spending levels. Uh, we need to make sure that we then adhere to that budget. Uh, Remember last year, we set out to pass all 12 appropriations bills. Well, we passed 10 out of committee. We passed seven over to the Senate. Of course, nothing has been moved on that from the Senate Mm -hmm. because we were going through all the process. And why was that important? We got 1,100 amendments voted on. Uh, We're able to see, for example, that last fall we offered an amendment to the state and foreign operations bill that would have stripped UNRWA's funding, right, the money going to the Hamas, basically. And uh, eight Republicans voted against adding an amendment that would have fully stripped that funding. So that amendment failed. We did get a weaker version that basically got in a lot of UNRWA. But you can those votes matter. Right now you're on the record. My Republican colleagues do not want to be on the record on these votes. <laughs> they like to go through votes with closed rules where they can just move something through in order to try to go win political votes. And that is not what the American people sent us here to do. We need to take votes, go on the record, and let the voters decide. That's why we need to have a budget. You are right. Uh, we moved the ball last year, but we hit the wall. And now we're sitting here, and we're not, we have not effectively completed the job of restoring regular order. 